Okay. Put my laptop in. Okay, welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm excited to finally start doing a webinar. Um, yeah, so I want to introduce you to the new uh, mindset and motherhood chat that I'm going to be doing probably bi-weekly for now and then see how that goes. Um, but this whole chat is basically going to be around anything mindset and motherhood related. So there is, for many of you who know, I will go back into, into in time and tell you a bit about my story, but um, for those of you who have been following along and understand that I've been on a bit of a mindset journey and a big piece around that has been um, motherhood and how I can shift my mindset when it comes to me raising my children. That has not been uh, an easy process. It has been very simple in the sense of what I'm learning is very simple, but it's very foreign to most people and it's it's taken a process of unlearning the stuff that I once learned that got me to the point of I need a change <laughs> so um, a bit of background on my story for those of you who have no idea and if you've heard it before I'm sure you'll hear a different piece that you maybe didn't hear before or something that's going to resonate deeper with you that uh, maybe didn't resonate with you before if you've if you've already heard it. So I'll take you back kind of quite a few years ago. Um, I was working a full-time job as a welder and I used to weld light armored vehicles. So it was not light work by any means, um, but I really enjoyed it in the sense that I felt accomplished because I graduated call a uh, before I even graduated college, I already had a full-time job. So I was hired based on, I knew the skills, even though I didn't have the diploma yet at that time to prove, I guess, let's say that I could actually do it. So I, it was a really good feeling in that sense. But as I, as I realize now, and as I know is there was a reason why that feeling didn't last because yes. we're all still undone. <laughs> um, there was a feeling that it was not my purpose. I was not put on this earth to weld for the military. And as cool as that job sounds, because don't get me wrong, I love seeing people's faces when I tell them what I used to do or when I was doing it, tell them what I did. And that used to give me, again, that kind of burst of joy. But it's like, that was an outside circumstance. That was an outside of me thing. And why would I do a job just because other people think it's cool? And at one point, obviously, I thought it was pretty cool too. But again, it was comes back to it was not my purpose and it's not what I was put on this earth to do. I was I was meant to do it to learn something, but I was not meant to do it forever. Um, I do enjoy the work, so I will come back to that at some point, but on my own terms and really tapping into more of that creative side. And now that I understand that, there is like this weight that got lifted off once I came to that realization um, and a, the realization that I could do more and still make good money because that was a big thing for me and I let other people's opinions come in and kind of take over on that <laughs> um, a lots of paradigms came in when I said I was going to resign from that work because there's a pension, there's benefits, there's all the things, right, that made it that good job. And in most people's world, making $30, $40 an hour is a good 
amount of money and you can easily live on that. And now finding my desire and everything that I've come to understand in my life today is that's just a limit that we have put on ourselves and we have bought into this belief that that kind of money is very good. You're well off, you're sustainable. Don't get me wrong. If you make that kind of money or less, you can still have a great life as long as you're living your purpose. That is like number one here. Um, if you're making that kind of money and you're happy and you feel fulfilled and you love going to work, then a hundred percent keep doing what you're doing because you're, you're on the right path of some kind. For me, that was not my path. Um, and understanding that now that was that limit, that was that standard that everybody else had set for me of this is what you're worth. Basically. Um, I know that that is not my worth even though this is a story that I'm still working on to believe, right? Because that's been ingrained so deeply into my subconscious mind. Um, but now I understand that there is so much more to that and how all of these pieces in my life now tie back together. It's like, if you were to ask me five years ago, three years ago, I would have never been able to tell you I was working with moms and families and truly helping them find their purpose because I didn't even know what my purpose was. So it's very interesting to see how all of this stuff can kind of come in and play a huge role in your life. And like I said earlier, I was meant to do certain things at certain times to build this desire. So it's like I had to experience working as a welder to know that I wanted to do something different. If I never experienced that, I wouldn't have known I needed a change or I wouldn't have understood that there's something in this life there that's bigger and more for me, um, that more fulfilling feeling. So um, fast forward to when I became a mom for the first time, all of these feelings that were coming in about the the lack mindset and all the things that were coming up when I worked my full-time job escalated when I became a mom because of all the things that all the beliefs and all the stories that I told myself for that long were now being even deeper ingrained because I had gone through a paradigm shift in a way like birth is a paradigm shift and uh go back um and so experiencing that um the birth was incredibly traumatic for me and it was hard on my body physically mentally all the things and so that kind of shook me in a way that I never really expected these feelings to go or something to feel this way or to kind of get to that really rock bottom place in my life because it's like you're a new mom my pregnancy was incredible leading up to that point I felt completely prepared um but again looking back on it now I know I had to experience that in order to become the person I am today and without that experience if I had three four incredible births then there, there would be no reason why I would have a need to help others or a need to change it. So it's very interesting how things can happen in your life. And at the time, you don't understand them at all. You think this is happening to you, but it's actually happening for you. And that is something that I really had to sit with because when you have hard things happen in your life, you don't expect that they're happening to for you. You think that they're just happening to you and you're just like, oh, just my luck, right? You just keep drilling into that, that thought of like, of course this would happen because I only attract in bad things. And then you understand the law of attraction now doing this work and how it works and I attracted in those things because of the mindset I had. So after having my son, um, 
there was a lot of things that came up there uh, around my relationship with my husband and just about like shifting these beliefs and these habits. And I knew something had to give, something had to shift or change, but I didn't know how. I was not taught that I had all of these tools inside of me to be able to shift my thinking and to change the way I perceive things and to change the situation because I want it to be different. I was not taught how to do these things. So going through life, um, I just sat in that, obviously being home with uh, a newborn at that time. And I just kind of sat in these feelings of like the victim mindset. What well, was me? This happened to me. No one else understands because they didn't have the birth that I had, um, which led me into seeing multiple therapists and again, never received the help that I was looking for and never understood really what I was looking for. I knew I wanted to change, but I couldn't tell you what I wanted. I was not in the habit of of doing that. I was, I did not, never had a goal, never had something I was working towards unless it was something very small, like a small purchase we wanted to make or something like that. Then it would be like, okay, save little bits of money here so we can buy it or we would buy it and then just find a way to pay for it. Um, so with my relationship with my husband, um, there was never actually talk of divorce because neither of us really wanted to utter those words, but we both felt that energy and we understood what that meant in the feeling and that vibration that we were bringing on to ourselves. So it was very, it was a very tough time in the sense that when we actually broke it down, and understood what was happening, looking back on it, because in the moment, I just didn't want to be here, I didn't want to be a mom, I didn't want to be home, I just constantly thought to myself, like, there goes my husband out the door again to work, living his normal life, whereas I was stuck at home, not living a normal life, and okay, maybe people think it's great to stay home with a baby, but our baby did not sleep during the day. So I had this giant expectation on myself that I needed to get working and grow my business because I did not want to. Um, come on. I did not want to return to my job after that mat leave and I knew that but there was still so much of me sitting in that victim mindset and that um like lack and I was in a horrible negative vibration because I was creating it upon myself and it was not good so it's like this went on and on and on and then it was like okay mat leave is up now I have to return to work because my business did not grow the way I wanted it to um so I had to go back but I planned it well that I'm like oh I'll work the system and I'll only go back for a few months and then I can go back off on mat leave again thinking that will that will change the the issues that were going on here if we just have another child then that will fix everything because I'll get the birth that I want that's what I kept telling myself I'll get the birth that I want this time around, because I know my body was capable of delivering a baby naturally. Um, my first baby was born C-section and it was extremely traumatic and doctors got involved and it was not good. Um, so that's what I believed. That if I can have a home birth next time, then everything will go well and I will not be in this headspace anymore because well that didn't happen because if anybody on here is a mom of two um, my kids are uh, just over two years apart so 
um, yeah, you're busy with a toddler at home and then having a newborn. <laughs> so no, things did not get easier. It actually escalated it again and got worse. Um, so it was very interesting to see this progression of me telling myself these stories and then thinking they're going to happen and be true, but staying in that negative vibration. So it's like, if I could have just flipped it to that positive vibration, so much more in my life would have happened because I was coming from a positive mindset, but I was so like deep into that negative, I could not even see a positive. I could not see light at the end of the tunnel. And I knew I could not do this on my own. And then I told myself time and time again, no one can help me because I've seen all the therapists. <laughs> like I've spent the money. I maxed out my benefits for the one therapist. So then I had to pay out of pocket and it was like, how can I afford this? And then I really wasn't getting the help. So it was like, I need so there, there's something else that I need. And it's crazy because I put this out there, not really knowing it because I had no idea what laws of the universe really were. And I had put that out there that I'm like, there is something more here. There is something more that I'm meant to find to open up this, this part of my life. And then I get, <laughs> I don't know the timing because again, right, I wasn't aware I was actually putting that out there to the time that I got a message from my coach. And it was basically like, come join me for this free five-day workshop. It was called Awaken Abundance. And I'm like, okay, this is exactly what, like, what did I have to lose, right? Free five-day, free. There was no money paradigms coming in. I didn't even know what a paradigm was at the time. Um, but I joined because I'm like, I'm not getting the help from the people that are supposed to be there to help me, right? It's like we we think a psychologist or therapist or counselor is there to help us. And they may help someone because they all have different levels of awareness and they all do their practice differently. But in my particular people that I saw, I think I saw like three or four in my area, um, they kept me in the past. And it was not moving me forward in the direction I wanted to go. It was like, okay, what came up for you this week? And blah, 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 dredging up this, 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 and this. Oh, this may have been stemmed from something in your childhood. And it's like, okay, great. But <laughs> how is this going to move me forward? Like, how is this going to get me out of these feelings and move me towards something? So this work actually did that. I was actually then like went through the whole course. And then in lesson one, it was like, find a goal, set your like desire on something. It doesn't have to be the thing for your whole life, but like the thing for right now. Um, so then that's what I did. And that got rid of like all of those other feelings, all of the, the beliefs and all those stories I was telling myself, there are some still like very deep rooted ones that I'm working on. But I was able to actually like aim at something and focus on something and not be so focused on what was happening in my day to day, like the mundane crap that was going on. I could focus on where I was going. And then then the path started to be aligned of like, OK, you need to do this in order to do this and this. And this. I wasn't telling myself how I was going to get there. I was just focusing on something. So with all of that, in that free five days my husband was just like, who are you? <laughs> like, who are you? This is not my wife. Maybe it was at like one point long ago, but like, I haven't seen her for so long. And like, this makes me emotional because he saw it. Like I knew I felt different, but he saw it. And so that was the, the most amazing thing that this transformed our relationship. Okay. And now it's like, we I knew we were meant to be together because I never had that feeling that I'm not meant to be with him that like we need to separate or get a divorce whatever I never had that feeling like there was talk if I keep do keep going down this road in my head he's gonna want to divorce me because I'm miserable I'm unhappy I don't know what I want I'm don't even want to speak to him most days because I was so 
caught up in my own shit <laughs> that I did not want to for him to be around that and he he admitted he didn't want to come home most days um so for me to have this drastic shift in these five days and then I was able to do it for six months was incredible because then I was able to jump out of this stuff I was feeling and actually be able to like focus my energy on something and that's what I needed that is 100% what I needed I needed something to focus on that I wanted and then step into becoming that person because you can sit in that want but then until you actually focus on like becoming that person who is a vibrational match for those things then you can start to believe it even though even though I didn't know exactly how I was going to get there all the things I knew I had something to focus on and I wasn't thinking about all of the crap of how shitty a mom I was or how I'm a terrible wife and the house is a disaster and just all the the crap that is around you but it's not causing you to actually think I was never actually thinking and that was a huge part of this it was either doing something based on someone else's opinion or thinking about all of the crap that was around me and that's not actually thinking we think it is but it's not because you're not thinking about thoughts that are going to move you forward or asking yourself questions and then journaling about what it is that you come up with so <laughs> this is like a very long version of my story but and then bits of my own awareness added into it but that is kind of the whole point of this piece around raising kids is not the easiest task they will bring up so much stuff in you that you didn't think was an issue and that's exactly what happened through this process of we now have three children I've been pregnant four times though and with that third pregnancy that was probably the most awareness around it because we did not have an actual baby it was a we had a miscarriage so that was probably my biggest shift and I'm so grateful I was doing this work at this at that time um because I'd be in a much different place if I wasn't doing this work and that and we experienced something like that so there's just so much around this mindset and motherhood and how we have to settle we always have to put our kids first and we don't do anything for ourselves um and that's not true that's a story that someone has told us at one point in time in our lives and we've adopted it as our own and believed that it is actually true and it's not or you've seen someone in your life where maybe your mom didn't go and pursue what she wanted to do because she decided to stay home and raise the kids and there's nothing wrong with that but usually we get in that habit of I'm just going to stay home and raise the kids. And then we don't do anything for ourselves. And I was starting to feel this 100% around not doing anything for me. I was not doing anything for me. Okay, yes, I'd go teach like a yoga class. But again, I was serving. I was taking that energy and serving people with it. And again, then my kids would need something and I'm serving them. And then coming back and it's like serving that person. So I was never really truly serving myself in the process. And that's where that had to shift. So it's like, there's that cliche of like self-care and going and getting my nails done. Okay. In the moment that would feel great. And I loved being able to like, look down at my fingers and be like, oh my God, I love having my nails painted. But that feeling didn't last because it was not something that was actually pulling anything out 
and shifting any of the beliefs. Like I can go back now because I know who I am as my goal achieved self. And I have beautiful painted nails and everything else. So it's, yeah, like you have to redefine the self-care, I guess, around that. Because if you're in the habit of giving all of your energy away, you need to fill up your cup and fill up your energy first before you can give it. So that is exactly what I do. And that has become a huge part of my routine since my second son was three months old. Um, and that involves me getting up and studying myself and learning something about me every single day. Because this is not something that we're taught in school. This is not something that I was ever taught by anyone in my life until it happened at the age of 27, 28, something like that. Um, because I had to, I believe, I had to experience what I experienced in my life and through the trauma of that in order to understand that there was something here that could change or there was a life that we could make better or something that you have to experience bad, like it's a law of clarity. You have to experience, well, bad, you're making it in your own mind bad. Let's just say that. But in my head, it was... <laughs> Um, I had to experience the, this outcome of having a very traumatic birth in order to understand. And then that ripple effect of then it affect, affected all the different areas of my life in order to actually know that I want to change, to know that I am capable of having something different in my life. And, and I attracted this stuff in for a reason and to not take and not be ashamed of that, I guess, because it, it happened in my life for a reason. Um, it was meant to teach me something. So if you can understand that, then there is so much here that you can uncover. Because when it comes to parenting, um, there's so much that's going to be brought up that you don't even, you didn't even think was a thing before in your life. And, uh, and that can be very frustrating because you're like okay I've, I've done all the things I've gotten to a place in my life that I'm really happy and then enter a child and you're like what the heck oh my alarms and everything are going off um and so it's very interesting to to do this work and to really dive deeper into yourself, because when you dive deeper into you, you become a better mom. And if you're married, you become a better spouse. It is, it honestly, it's a win-win. So it's like doing this for you benefits everyone. And being able to teach. So I'm right now in the habit of, I'm a five-year-old, teaching him and my three-year-old, teaching them these concepts because it's going to radically change their life and they don't have to experience waiting to learn this stuff until their 20s or 30s like I did, right? So they'll get a much different time and now I'm affecting the next generation. They're going to learn this stuff, whether they study it or not. I'm assuming they will because it's a, such a big part of our life. And then that's going to affect their kids, kids, kids. Like, do you see how this, like, diving into it when you are a mom, you can see how all of this stuff gets shifted, right? Like, all of this stuff can, can shift not only from you, but now you're changing the next generation and generation after that and after that and after that. So, yes, yeah. diving into this when you're a mom is like a game changer and that is all I'm going to say this is going to be a bi-weekly um talk and I won't probably always stream it on Instagram but it will be a part of our community um so if you want into the community if you're not already a part then this is going to be huge for you um 
But yes, please reach out if anything I said in this webinar or chat struck something or resonated with you. I would love to have to have like a deeper conversation about it, right? Because this is so huge. And even if you're a grandma, like there is stuff that you can do now to affect your grandkids or your kids. Like that is huge, right? And it is all just starts with just making the decision to change the thought that enters our mind, right? Okay, this went way longer than I thought, so <laughs> I'm gonna wrap up. But yes, I will see you in two weeks. Take care, guys. Bye.